just came out. Uh, really, it's been about three weeks ago on the Meaningful Use stage. Two sort of finalized rules uh, and the big challenges that are coming up for folks. You know, what do you think are the big things that they're going to be sort of challenged with with the way things have changed? I mean, obviously, we've got 90-day reporting period. We've got, uh, you know, you have to have two of the specialized registries slash syndromic registry, you know, that, those kind of things. There's a lot that really changed at least from my perspective, kind of looking at it, uh, what do you think are going to be the big challenges? What do you think they're going to be faced with? So the rule, um, the meaningful use changes that have come out have certainly alleviated some stress in certain areas. Uh, however, we have created other issues. Um, one of the things that is fortunate for this year is that it appears that CMS is being pretty relaxed uh, in what we need to accomplish for the 2015 reporting year. Mm -hmm. So we do know that it's a 90-day reporting period. Um, and unfortunately, CMS didn't release this until the middle of October, which already put us into the reporting period. Yeah. So we Seems kind of were struggling with things. Yeah. So <laughs> there are things at first that I was panicked about, like the registry, the syndromic data, the public health measure in general is one that is certainly a concern. Um, CMS did release a statement that basically says if you were not planning to do one of those measures, because if we remember way back to stage two, you know, October 1st, whenever we were still doing stage two, um, it, you had the option in the menu items to either choose syndromic or a registry, or there were other measures that you could choose from, from the menu items. So many of my groups had no intentions of doing a registry or syndromic surveillance. Right. Um, and, so, and CMS has released a, a sort of statement, which kind of is double speak in some ways, because the rule says we have to do two of them. But they've released a, a fact sheet that says, you know what, we really don't think people, if you weren't intending to do it in 2015, that you can get an exclusion for that for this year. Sure. Um, what that does mean is that we still need to do it for 2016 because it is a full reporting period. So it doesn't mean that we can totally forget about that particular measure. And that is the one that is, to me, the most challenging, especially for some of the specialized groups. Mm. Uh, you know, orthopedics, for instance, I'm mm. struggling with what kind of registry do we do for them? How do we get data to submit? So those ones, while we've gotten a reprieve for the 2015 year, we are still working with dramatically to try to get them for 2016. Absolutely, yeah, uh, and I'm hearing the same thing on my side. I'm actually getting a lot of you know conversations from you know uh, orthopedic back folks and shoulder guys that are kind of going, "What do you what want me they... to do?" You know, I mean, yeah. I go to a you know the Aces registry because yeah, you know that that doesn't make sense for us. So yeah, I totally hear what you're saying, and, and I'm seeing the same thing on my side. Yeah, those are definitely areas that we're just, I don't know what to do with them. And we're, we're plugging forward, trying to get some clinical guidance to say, okay, what, what makes sense for these, these sure. specialties that, you know, it's not, it's not black and white. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good insight. Good insight.